Okay. Uh, well, thank you for the invite. I'm sorry that I can't actually uh, physically be with you. Um, uh, I, I, did, I assume that what you want to do is just give you about 10 minutes of a run through of what the Good Time app is, what it does, and some update. So um, that's okay. I'll just start with some, uh, sharing my screen with you. If you can't hear me at any point, just tell me, and I'll, um, uh, and I'll uh, uh, stop. Hold on two seconds. Okay, can you see this screen? Can you see this okay? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Okay. So uh, just to go through what Good Sam app is, it, it really developed from London's Air Ambulance. It's a social enterprise, not-for-profit uh, app. And just to explain uh, where it came from. Um, we, uh, 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 sorry, uh, my background is that I'm a neurosurgeon. I also work, as I say, for London's Air Ambulance. And we get a number of people who get um, a mechanical injury that causes a head injury. And uh, so particularly someone who's been hit by a, a vehicle, bullseye windscreen. And one of the first things that happens in the, um, well, immediately after you've had a head injury is people stop breathing. And this is a phenomenon called impact brain apnea. It's something that's well known about in animals. Um, and it also happens in humans, but we're often not there to witness it. Uh, this is a, a tracing from uh, a dog that was breathing quite happily. Uh, it had a metal plate strapped, strapped to the side of its head. Someone shot the metal plate, so it had a sudden impact of its, on, on its head. And you see breathing quite happily, then it stops breathing. Dog resuscitates, comes along, breathes for dog, and then breathes on its own. Now, that, uh, this was from Kramer in 19, sorry, 1896. Um, and this has been known about, about for a long while. It's been shown in many different uh, animals. Basically, the harder you hit an animal, the longer it stop, does it stops breathing for. And if you don't resuscitate it during that period, then it, it obviously will die. And we want to find a way of minimizing impact brain apnea. Um, and uh, so this is where the good sound app came really, from, really. It was really more for trauma than anything else. Um, However, obviously, it has a much bigger role in cardiac arrest and life-threatening emergencies. Um, so if I can just explain uh, how it works a little bit. Um, so I won't, I, won't, I won't go through this uh, stuff, but there's two uh, uh, apps. There's an alert app and there's a respond app. Uh, the alert one is the one that the general public uh, just downloads. They're all free. Uh, the responder one is the one that sits on uh, doctors, nurses, paramedics, uh, community first responders, uh, or anyone who's got a first aid at work or above certificate. Uh, they can register on it. And uh, it just sits there, and on anything above an iPhone 5, it doesn't uh, really drain any battery. Um, and uh, when, it's, uh, when alerted, you get a push notification or a text message that comes through uh, giving you details of where um, uh, your emergency is. So really, this is, the way to think about this is really for um, uh, alerting people within a couple of hundred meters of the instant. Um, uh, the way we thought about it was often when someone has a cardiac arrest, there is probably someone within one to 200 meters who's good, at, who can do high quality CPR and use a defibrillator, um, but often they won't know about it. You know, they may be in the shop next door, uh, you're in the coffee shop and in the shoe shop next door, there's, there was actually an anaesthetist, but no one knew about it until the ambulance arrived. So it's really just alerting the trained people uh, for this. Now, um, it also has a defibrillator function on it, so people can upload defibrillators. I have to say, um, uh, you guys uh, have been fantastic at uploading defibrillators and joining, uh, and I'll show you some pictures of that uh, in a moment. Um, the system really has taken off over the last uh, six months. We've got nearly 4,000 responders now in the UK. Um, in Ireland, you've got a lot as well. You can see on that map over there. And around Dublin, you've got plenty. And this is just the good SAM people. I should also explain that what we've done is we've done it so that organizations can register. So you've got CFR Ireland, which is an organization that's registered. And then people can sign up under CFR Ireland. Uh, and then it means that... Uh, um, Either they can sort of authenticate you and, and control the governance, but also uh, in the event of a major incident, it means that everyone can be found very quickly. And it's certainly something that London's Air Ambulance now uh, has been using um, in that all the, the doc all the doctors and paramedics on uh, London's Air Ambulance are registered under LAA. And it means that if there's a major incident, someone just has to open a laptop and they can Im immediately see where we all are. Uh, so it has a role in major incidents as well. So that's the, that's the um, density across London. Uh, this was yesterday. Um, you can see there's, you know, uh, we're down to every one to 200 meters now. There is a responder around. Um, we're working with a number of organizations. For example, the Save Life Foundation in India is an organization. I'm, not, I'm going to think of last. Uh, they're 100,000 responders for road traffic incidents. Now, they don't have an ambulance service in most parts of India, and they don't have a dispatch system. So they're now. Can you hear me okay? No, the last few sentences, Mark, we didn't Can quite you get to there. Sorry. They're now. Using Sam as, an, as a dispatch system. Sorry there. Can you hear me okay now? Now I can, yes. Okay. 
Okay. No. We're working with an organization called the Save Life Foundation in India. And they're an organization that's particularly interested in road traffic accidents. And they've trained up 100,000 responders uh, to go to road traffic accidents. But there isn't an, a formal dispatch cert system. There's no ambulance service in most parts of India. So they're using the Good Sam system as a dispatch mechanism for their responders for traffic accidents. Um, more relevant to you, uh, we're very now integrated with London's ambulance service. The Cabinet Office and Nesta have been very good at back us and um, we're integrating with CAD and currently we're going under extensive testing um, with a view to go live in the next month or so uh, with, uh, um, uh, with LAS CAD system. This means that we'll be able to act about 20 activations a day looking at the um, criteria that we've, that we've established for using the Good Sound system and we're also working across Australia uh, and other places. Uh, just a little bit about the defibrillator function. Uh, how that works is uh, if someone sees a defibrillator fixed location, which is on a platform, uh, then you can take a picture of it and it uploads onto the server. Uh, we check that it is really where, it, where you say it is, uh, and then it appears on the map. So it now means that we've got many, uh, many, well, over 12,000 defibrillators uh, on the system. And uh, I do enjoy looking at the pictures of some of them. This is one uh, that's been uploaded uh, from Ireland. Uh, holy water and holy electricity there. Um, and another I don't know. I'm glad you can hear me. That's the first time I've heard anything. Um, uh, I don't know which is more effective, but anyway. Uh, and, and you've got amazing little, just like, um, dune type uh, rugged defibrillators located in the most unusual places. Anyway, um, so. Uh, the, the, from an update point of view, uh, we've now got this institutional login function. So you can see here some of the organizations uh, that are registered now and they control their own sponsors. Uh, we're in with dispatch. And CAD, and CAD integration, as I say, we've developed it so that rather than having push notifications, it will also give you a text message now. So if you're in a 2G area, you'll still get the message instantly. Actually, what you're going to see very soon is that we've even developed it for India, and it'll work in everywhere else as well, but we've developed it so that if you don't have a smartphone, you just have an, an old Nokia from the 1990s, it will still work. Uh, as long as uh, on the web system you put where you work and where you live, uh, at what times you work and live at the different locations, we can still dispatch you through an old phone. And we've developed it so that um, John and other, who are also signing up, John and other organizations can um, have it as powered by Good Sam. So we don't really, we're just the sort of glue that helps um, organizations make this work. So this is you guys now. Um, hopefully Rory's around there. I hope you don't mind me showing that, Rory. Let me just, I can load up uh, your own uh, um, uh, stuff now. Hold on two seconds, one minute. Uh, so here you go. This shows you the defibrillator that you've uploaded. And um, if I zoom into where you guys are. We're looking at Dublin, Mark. So this is just the good Can you see this okay? Yes, we can. Okay. So, um, so as an organization, you can, I, I, I hope you don't mind me showing people here. Some people will be anonymous. Um, actually, it may not even work. Oh, there's Gerard. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and then you've got a system whereby you can push notifications. So there you go. Someone in your audience there has just got a little push notification, probably. Um, um, uh, and it means that there, you can... There, we found um, him. We have him. He's in uh, the audience. <laughs> it's true, yeah, yeah. It works. Um, the, the reason why, it's, from, a, from a major incident point of view, this is quite useful. So people can anonymous, that's not a problem. Um, um, and when when um, a major incident happens, you can just push notify everyone and say, please de-anonymize yourself. Uh, and then you can see where everyone is. And that's how, as I say, we'll, we're using it on London's ambulance service now, uh, and air ambulance rather. And it means that we can um, dispatch the aircraft, get people into the right place and see when they're um, approaching Hyde Park or where they're going to get picked up from. Um, so, just so you, know, so you see how it works from a, uh, an organizational point of view, uh, you manage responders, you can um, check them, you look at their ID and if they're appropriate, and, the, and, you, and you can confirm who they say are, they uh, um, approve them. Um, this is how you can email them, push notify everyone one mass, and then there's a defibrillator function. So, let's just see if anyone is, uh, I haven't looked at this, so I could do something really stupid here. Um, here we go, there's someone's uploaded a defibrillator. Let's just see. Um, well, oh, I have to say, my internet here is painfully slow. I'm very sorry. Um, but what will happen here? So there'll be a picture of the defibrillator. Hopefully, this is, I think it'll be in Ireland looking at the coordinates. Bless him. I don't know. I think you can see that. So that's a defibrillator. Yes, 
uh, and we can check it, these coordinates to make sure this is where they say it is, and then if it's appropriate, we'll approve it. And so that's, that's pretty much how it works. Now, as I say, um, uh, the, if your, your audience there, you shouldn't really register under Good Sam, probably better off registering under CFR Island, um, which is what the red, red, little red guys are on here. So hopefully that's a, a little summary for you and an, an update. Is that um, useful for you? Um, have anyone got any questions? I should now just try and get myself back on here, sorry. Uh, okay, thank you, Mark. If you just stay there for a moment, we'll see if we have any questions from the floor. Just, just one moment. Can you hear me, Mark? Sorry, I'm having a bit of a pop. If you get a, maybe if you get a mic. Hello. Just bear with us, Mark, please. Okay. Need a mic. There we go. Hi, Mark. It's David. Can you hear me? Hey, David. Yeah, good. To yeah, you. good. Th right. Thanks a million for uh, squeezing us in. Um, now, just interested in the update in terms of London. Uh, and how the integration with the CAD there is going, because obviously that's the, the crucial step. Really sorry, David, I couldn't hear your question. Okay. I'm really sorry. Can so you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, just um, wondering how the integration the with London Ambulance Control is going. Uh, I saw something that you were nearly there this week. Yeah, yeah. So um, we've um, developed an API, which is free. Um, uh, which integrates with their CAD system. Now, I'm not a technical expert, and I can get the technical expert guys uh, to talk to you, um, but basically it works, it's a very simple um, uh, API that determines the variables that they want, um, and uh, it will automatically, effectively place a pin. So if someone calls in, and they've, they've identified 20 um, uh, categories of things that they would like to dispatch uh, a good SAM responder to. So this is someone who's, uh, Unconscious, not breathing. So, okay. um, uh, and it automatically will drop a pin, and as well as obviously an ambulance crew going to it, it's alerting the nearest three people at the same time. Um, uh, and it, we, I've actually been triggered on it already. They're doing quite extensive testing, as I say, um, and it seems to be working very well. Um, we're just they're going to go through a final phase with um, Nesta and the cabinet officer who have approved it all, just to make sure everything's happy before we go live. But it's all looking very good. Thank you. Um, does anybody Sorry, else have I've got really bad. Okay. Mark, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can just about hear you. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I can. Sorry. That's okay. I'm just going to see if we have any more questions from the delegates. Anybody else have a question for Mark? No, I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, Mark. Um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Okay. All right. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.